It's been a long wait, but the first Mercedes fully built electric vehicle is here. The Mercedes EQC. It is a 2.5 ton SUV. However, don't let that fool you because this car delivers quite the punch thanks to the EV tech that's lurking beneath. In fact, if you were to line this car up on the traffic lights with a Ferrari released in the same year, you'd be surprised at the results you'd get. We'd get more into that a bit later. For now, I'm Luke. This is The Future is Electric. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't. Like if you enjoy the content. And today we are checking out this Mercedes EQC. It was quite the statement when in 2019 Mercedes-Benz announced that they have stopped development of the internal combustion engine. The same company which 100 years ago brought that same internal combustion technology to the market have stopped development to focus on this, their all-electric lineup. This is the first all-electric Mercedes to hit the market, the Mercedes EQC originally released in 2019, but it's been a long way till it got here in Malta. There was battery shortage, there was chip shortage, there was shipping crises, there was COVID, but it's here. The Mercedes EQC. If this car looks familiar, it's because it is, because this is built on the existing Mercedes GLC platform. So Mercedes originally invested in Tesla. Tesla in return converted the Mercedes B-Class into an electric car, the Smart into an electric car, um, which we've reviewed before on the channel. And Mercedes have taken the same approach here for the car that they themselves built as an all-electric, this, the EQC, they have built it um, from an existing platform. So they haven't gone and rewritten all the rules and built an electric car from the ground up, which does have some cons. No front, despite being a huge car, no front space um, in the front. A big column right down the middle, which you really don't need in an all electric car. Um, but despite these little, say, hiccups, there's a lot to talk about here because this is no short of EV tech. Let's dive deeper. So this is a big car and big cars have big batteries. This is 85 kilowatts of battery, which is the largest we've had on this channel. Of the 85, 80 kilowatts are actually usable and the battery pack is of course made up of a number of individual battery cells 384 of them to be exact and those cells are coming from the sort of trusted supplier by mercedes lg chem i say that because mercedes are using lg chem for practically all their vehicles the smart which we've reviewed before on the channel and also the mercedes p -Heb, which we've reviewed on the channel so the cell chemistry is NCM622, which means you have six parts nickel, two parts cobalt, and two parts manganese. Now I've done some digging about the cell chemistry and there is some science behind it. So after 2000 charge cycles, which means you've charged and discharged the battery 2000 times, which if you're charging once per week, because you get 400 kilometers on a charge here in Malta, that's like 30 to 40 years of use. After 2000 charge cycles, when operated at 30 degrees Celsius, the cell chemistry degrades by 50%. However, when operated at 25 degrees Celsius, after 2000 charge cycles, it loses just 10% of its initial capacity, maintaining 90% of original battery health. Mercedes, of course, know this. And in fact, the battery pack is being liquid cooled to maintain that ideal 25 degrees Celsius. Like other cars we've seen on this channel, you can modify your region strength using the paddle shifters found behind the steering wheel. We saw this in the other Mercedes review and also in the Mitsubishi Eclipse uh, review. And I have to be honest here, I'm starting to like this because it gives you a degree of flexibility, which um, I actually like and you can adjust and control the region. Of course, they have their um, adaptive radar-based region, like we discussed in detail in the smart review, something Mercedes developed themselves, um, but also different levels of region strength. So this is a big car. Uh, it is 2.5 tons of car. 
and it's gonna take a lot of energy to get 2.5 tons going. However, with the 85 kilowatt battery, this car still achieves a WLTP range of 411 kilometers. On a car this big, charging times are a crucial factor. And there are two charging options in this car. There is the AC charging on Type 2 and there is the DC fast charging on CCS. Now on Type 2, you can charge on three phase at 11 kilowatts, which has become sort of a standard, I'd say, in the industry. Now at 11 kilowatts, it means this car can charge to full in eight hours, just under nine hours, which means it is essentially one night a week. You're probably charging this car to be ready for the next week. However, on DC fast charging, it can charge, it's the fastest I've reviewed so far, so it can charge at 112 kilowatts per hour, which means this very, very large battery is charged in just 35 minutes. Having said that, the fastest chargers we have here in Malta are actually 50 kilowatts. So the charging time is still gonna be a bit longer till we get the fasting, faster charging infrastructure. But if you're taking this car overseas, say to Italy, etc., I'm sure you're gonna find some fast chargers there. So it might not look it because it is a 2.5 ton SUV after all, but this car delivers quite the punch. Two electric motors, all wheel drive. One motor in the front, geared for efficiency um, and slow speeds. One motor in the back, geared for power. And together, they deliver seven 160 newton meters of torque which is actually more torque than you'll get in a ferrari f8 turbo what does that even mean well the torque is actually the strength of a motor and we measure torque both for internal combustion engine motors and electric motors however the difference in an internal combustion engine you achieve torque differently at different rpms in an electric motor, you get instant torque at maximum right away, which means this car can accelerate and accelerate fast. In fact, it achieves 0 to 100 km per hour in 5.1 seconds. However, if, say, you were to line your car up at the traffic lights with a Ferrari F8 Turbo, a 2019 Ferrari versus a 2019 Mercedes EQC SUV, up to 50 kilometers per hour you will actually out accelerate a ferrari now i know we're not comparing like with like here but it just goes to show you what power there is in the electric motors so as we said the weight was long but it is here and if you can afford it it's worth the money i'd like to thank kinds auto sales for letting us take out the mercedes eqc today Peter for helping out with all the technical. If you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. And um, this is a brand new uh, channel. So we literally have like 400 subscribers on recording of this video. So every subscription counts and your support does matter. Like if you enjoyed the comment, if you enjoyed the content, comment. If you have any questions about the Mercedes EQC or which car I should review next. My name is Luke and this was The Future is Electric. Unless you be quiet, please. I'm sorry. No, no. Shh. We are recording a review. So you can speak to I'm the car. Sorry, but I can't help you with it right now. I know, I know. But I'm recording the review. You're being a car. A car which talks.